Welcome, everyone. Today, I'm happy to introduce you our presenter, Dr. Saina Roa Diaz. She has a PhD in epidemiology and is scientific information specialist in the medical library. During her PhD at the ISPM, she was able to gain extensive experience with systematic reviews. Therefore, she will present you tips for successful leading your team in a systematic review. Thank you so much for the introduction. And as you mentioned today, uh, we will mm, share some tips for successfully leading your team in a systematic review. I think that uh, first we need to start to think what is a systematic review? Well, for those maybe that are not so familiar, it's a methodology that allows you to identify and synthesize all the available evidence around a research question. There are many steps that are part of this methodology, but maybe I can uh, try to summarize them in these nine points, where basically everything starts uh, with an idea in the first step. After that idea is refined in a very nice and precise research question, and right after uh, the researcher leading the project start to create a team that will be part of the project and to create a protocol that will guide the team during the entire project. Once these steps are achieved, uh, researchers need to identify literature in different sources, databases, even great literature, and in this step, we work closely with them. And once all the uh, literature is identified, researchers need to screen the identified literature, extract the data that will answer the question uh, of the project, and criticize or evaluate the quality of the evidence included. To finally provide a nice summary of the evidence around the topic of the systematic review, either as a, a qualitative summary or as a quantitative summary through a meta-analysis. Having this in mind, we can see that it's a huge effort to perform a systematic review, and therefore a team is needed, but that team can be very heterogeneous. For sure, you will always work with experts, but possibly you will also have in your team beginners, even in the topic that you are addressing in the systematic review or beginners in the implementation of the methodology of a systematic review. You will also work with librarians, statisticians, and depending on complexity, you can also work with project managers. And the team and the team is crucial because by definition, when you're performing a systematic review, many steps need to be performed twice. And sometimes the opinion of a third researcher is required. I'm talking about the steps of the screening, the data extraction, and quality assessment of the literature. So keep in mind that systematic review requires many skills of project management. And on top of managing your the team, it is really important to have in mind the time that you have to accomplish the project. Even either for submitting the project uh, to publication in a journal or just finishing the entire project. Because at this point, it's also important to mention that the effort of identifying all the uh, literature that is related to your research question can be outda outdated at some point, maybe after six, 12 months. And that implies that you need to, again, search for more literature and run many of the steps of the systematic review. So your work basically will be to keep your team motivated and meet the deadlines. That's why it's a good idea to think in 
problems that I have always encountered when I'm performing a systematic review is maybe you can have problems regarding to excluding important articles. Maybe you miss the register of the reasons for inclusion or exclusion in any steps, or you miss the numbers. Uh, you maybe have problems in the data extraction part, or maybe you have problems in the risk of bias assessment of the included articles of your systematic review, and many others that maybe you can also add to this list, but today we will focus on these four. So what we can do, how to avoid the exclusion of useful articles. You will see many times this phrase during this short talk is train your team. To avoid the exclusion of useful articles, first, you have to identify the articles that for sure will be part of the synthesis of your systematic review. I use them as an example for your team of the articles that will be part of the, of the systematic review. So identify and share with your team the, the useful articles. Second, it is important to be clear with your team what is the aim during the different steps of the systematic review. For example, in the screening of title and abstract, you want to have high sensitivity during the process. You want to have all possible articles that will be useful for your systematic review. But when you reach the step of screening the full text, there you want to have high specificity. Actually, there you are ruling out all articles that are not meeting your inclusion and exclusion, uh, not, are not meeting your inclusion criteria or actually are presenting exclusion criteria. And at this point, I also recommend that from the extended version of the protocol, you create a one-page protocol, I name it like short protocol, that you can share with your team and everyone can have a look of the aim and eligibility criteria during the process of, the, of screening. But on top of this, nowadays I have to speak about the softwares that we have to support on the entire process of systematic reviews, including the screening phase as Ryan or Pico Portal, and Covidence that is a software that we provide access uh, to researchers that are collaborating with us that uh, will facilitate the process of screening and validating the agreements between the researchers and also, as you can see uh, in this screenshot, these softwares are including now artificial intelligence to help you to prioritize the articles that uh, will be more suitable for your research. Now we can move to a second question. Uh, how can be accountable during the systematic review process? So I highly recommend to centralize uh, the information. Even we are working in a team and many steps are divided in, within the team, someone needs to collect all the information. For example, when you are identifying literature, maybe someone is in charge of perform a manual search. What I recommend is that the output of that effort is registered in a file that is very similar to the files that we have from other sources, for example, a file that can be imported in a node or in a reference manager, to have the numbers and to have in a one file the information that was retrieved to through this additional effort. Uh, what is also important at this uh, point to ask for the correct information is check what are the requirements of the target journal that you are intending to you are intending to apply? Because sometimes um, journals want to present the reasons for exclusion and exclusion criteria even in the screening of, of title and abstract, but many others know. So it is better to have that in mind to uh, be able to perform the right. Um, data collection for your submission. 
And at the end, you will be able to have a nice graph where you basically will present the numbers of how many articles did you identify even through databases or any other effort, how many articles did you exclude during the screening process, and at the end, how many articles were finally synthesized in your systematic team. Now we move to the third question, and is uh, how to capture the right information. Again, here it is important to train your team and try to standardize the data collection. Uh, that means that either you create um, a file in a very classic so, uh, software like Excel, or you can use also Google, but nowadays with the software that I previously mentioned, you can also do it. Standardize uh, the information that you will be collecting. And advice is that everyone should highlight in PDF the information that they are extracting, because in case there is any disagreement, it will be more easy to go back to identify where I took the information and solve the disagreement. And I also recommend that uh, someone with experience check at least the first three extraction um, exercise of each reviewer to be sure that uh, mistakes are not um, being part of the process. So an example here, you can see that um, in the top of the slide, Excel file, and what I also recommend here is when I, you are collecting the data, it is better to collect data as it is in the articles, especially for the statistics. Um, after one person in the team will be in charge of transforming this information. And as you can see here also in the software that I mentioned, for example, Covidence nowadays, it's also possible to create a nice form to capture the information. And at the end, you will be able to download an Excel file where you will have all the information that you need. And finally, this is a very somehow uh, detailed and demanding step that is the evaluation of bias. And that step is very related to the type of articles that you are including in your review. There are several tools to perform these risk of bias assessments. Um, but basically, the, um, the tools are focused on selection information and confounding bias. But what it is important at this point is that we you will need to train your team. Why? Because even there are tools that are standardized to evaluate the risk of bias, you will have to adapt and to discuss what is a possible bias in the context of your research. Here you can see an example of one of the dimensions of the risk of bias tool for randomized trial. This is the domain of bias due to missing outcome data. And you can see that there are four clear questions, but the answers to these questions have four possible options. And for a good uh, standardization of the process, it is important to discuss with your team which answer will you choose in case you find information about the, how many participants uh, were missing in, in the article, but that represents a risk that depends on your research question. How the participants, uh, participants were missed, that depends, the impact of this will depend on your research question and the context of your study. So this kind of detail needs to be uh, discussed with your team and before to both perform the, the risk of bias assessment. And these are some references that could be useful for you. And now we are in the question and discussion section. 